Singapore is a very good choice if you want to study abroad because you get very good uh, exposure. Uh, uh, there's a lot of research that goes on here in the universities that you can take part in. And uh, after uh, your graduation, there are tons of opportunities for people who would actually uh, go a step ahead and grasp them. So, hey guys, today we have with us Mr. Divesh Biyani. Uh, he is a senior software engineer at PayPal and also my colleague in the same team. And as you can see, we are wearing the same t-shirt to celebrate the World Environment Day. So I reached out to Devesh to talk about his finances when he was studying at Nanyang Technological University from 2013 to 2017. And he was very much ready for sharing his experience that how could he manage his finances, what scholarships he got, how could he manage his loans, and all the procedure that you may need when you come here for your education. So, hey, Devesh, welcome to the channel. Hi, Amit. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, Devesh, uh, let's get started with your career and academic background. Tell our viewers, where did you come from and how did you reach here? Uh, I come from Hyderabad in India and I came to Singapore back in 2013. And uh, I did my bachelor's from Nanyang Technological University in computer engineering. And after four years, I graduated, after which I joined Accent, uh, Avanade, which is a subsidiary of Accenture and Microsoft. And uh, uh, after two years of working over there, I decided to switch to PayPal. And uh, uh, I'm still here at PayPal, and hopefully I will be here for a long time. So uh, that's great, Devesh. Thanks for giving your introduction in a very short and concise manner. So now I would like to ask, how did you decide to move to Singapore for your bachelor's? Because most of the people in India, they cannot think beyond IIT. They prepare for IITs. And if they don't get into IIT, they go into triple IIT or some other college. But uh, very rarely, they decide to move outside India. And you did make that decision and chose Singapore as your educational destination. So how that decision come upon? Uh, okay, so I think the decision came, uh, not the decision, the option uh, was given to me by my parents, especially my mom, and uh, also my brother, who, uh, uh, who told me that this would be a very good opportunity to go outside of India for my further studies, and I grasped the, uh, grasped the opportunity. And after that, uh, we, uh, I actually went uh, to a consultancy and uh, they were giving me options. Uh, US was one of the options and Singapore was one of the options. Uh, so given my financial background, I thought that Singapore would be a cheaper option. And also uh, it is an amazing city to live in. Uh, so, uh, and the uh, universities are ranked uh, quite high here too. So uh, that is when I decided that Singapore would be a very good opportunity for me. And yeah, so that's why I'm here. That's great, Devesh. And you chose uh, NTU as your educational destination. Uh, so now tell us what were the requirements of getting into Nanyang Technological University? Uh, okay, so uh, at least back in 2013, when I applied, uh, the requirements were uh, not very transparent. Uh, like I, I actually didn't have to give the SATs. Uh, but I still had given the SATs, but it was not a requirement. Uh, but uh, uh, mainly the uh, main requirements was uh, the uh, 12th marks of whatever board you were in, uh, state board or IB or ICSE or CBSE, whatever that was. Uh, like that was it, uh, the 12th uh, marks were the requirements. But again, those marks uh, would depend on uh, actually the board. So for each board, the cutoff was different. But again, that was not transparent. So I, I really don't know uh, what exactly the cutoff was. But yeah, that was the requirement, the 12th marks. Uh, that's great. So uh, yours was the Andhra Pradesh board or uh, yours uh, yes, was, was the CBSE? AP board. Yes. Okay. And uh, because uh, there is a different difficulty level for different boards, that's why yes. they keep it, uh, uh, they keep the cutoff different, but they do not keep it transparent. So, okay. Yes. Apart, from, yeah. apart from that, apart from that, did your resume had some spikes or any uh, activities that would have helped them to recognize that this guy may add more value apart from academics in uh, his application? Again, here, I'm not really sure about what exactly the requirements were, but I, I just gave in uh, whatever uh, Olympiads or whatever extracurricular activities that I took part in. And uh, they were very minimal because I was from state board and I didn't have many opportunities over there. 
uh, yeah, so again, I'm not really sure what exactly the requirements were, uh, but yeah, I think the minimal requirements were enough. And yeah, that's how I got in. So now tell us once your admission in NPU was confirmed, you must have thought about uh, the financial burden that it will uh, bring with itself. So there must be a wholesome fees. And apart from that, uh, your food and expenses, other, other things that you have to manage in Singapore. So uh, first, first thing that comes to anybody's mind is whether I'm getting any scholarship that can reduce the uh, significant amount of burden uh, of tuition fees, which is the major chunk of your expenses in a foreign country. So uh, did you get any scholarship? Uh, yeah, Amit. So uh, after I got into NTU, uh, after I got admitted into NTU, uh, uh, definitely uh, the uh, the question of fees was uh, was a very big one that I had to think of. Uh, so uh, so uh, okay, NTU provided me with all the necessary guidelines uh, uh, for uh, for any sort of scholarship or tuition grant that would be needed. So that way, NTU was really helpful. Uh, so for me, I actually applied for the tuition grant that uh, actually anyone can get, any foreign student in Singapore can get. Uh, the requirements for that uh, are uh, actually not much. You just need to accept that uh, you will be working in Singapore for three years after you graduate. Guys, if you want to research more on this, just search about service obligation in Singapore. Uh, that will give you a lot more detail through uh, Googling and different web pages. So service obligation scholarship covered 50% of your tuition fees, but still there was a big amount to be paid. And how did you plan uh, to pay that uh, when you were not yet arrived in Singapore? Okay. Uh, so apart from the tuition grant, uh, I could also apply for other loans. Uh, which the Singapore government was, uh, like uh, the university was willing to uh, give me. And those were the study loan and the tuition fee loan. So uh, those also covered a very big amount, a uh, very big chunk of uh, the tuition fees. Uh, yeah, so the uh, application of those loans would again, uh, uh, like the, the requirements of those loans uh, would again be available online. And I, I cannot remember because it's been a long time. Uh, but again, it was uh, really easy to get those loans once uh, you meet the relevant criteria. Okay, so uh, now tell us, you got two loans, if I'm not wrong, you got yes. one from DBS and one from OCBC Bank. So these were the options that were given to you from university or this is your own research that came in handy when you were selecting the banks? Uh, so as far as I remember, it was, uh, I think it was a choice. So it really doesn't depend because uh, both of them would give the equal amount of loan and the interest rate would also be same. So it doesn't matter if you take uh, one DBS, one OCBC or like any uh, permutation, uh, any combination of banks. Okay, so yeah. let us say your fees per semester was an X amount. Then X by two is what you had to pay because uh, uh, you got a tuition fees grant. And uh, up, out of that X by two, uh, how much uh, percentage of uh, money were uh, was already covered through bank loans? And finally, how much final percentage of money you had to pay? So give uh, us some okay, figures maybe, so that uh, it is uh, Yeah, I think it will be better if I get some figures. So uh, my total uh, uh, tuition fees was around 28,500. And uh, the service, uh, the tuition fee grant was uh, covered around 13,500 of the total amount. And uh, again, the, uh, so after that, I had uh, the two loans uh, that covered about 11,000. Uh, yeah, and then I was left with 4,000 uh, Singapore dollars uh, that was uh, left to pay. So yeah, that is the total amount I had to pay per year. So per semester, it was around $2,000. Uh, that is just the tuition fees. Uh, then uh, the other amount was uh, for like the accommodation, uh, which was about uh, maybe 200 or 250 uh, per month. Yeah. And apart from that, uh, the other uh, expense was also uh, my living expenses, like uh, my food and any other uh, activity that I wanted to take part in. So uh, it uh, it obviously depends on how extravagant you want to live. So it it could range between uh, 400 to 600 or maybe more. So it again, uh, depends on you, uh, how extravagantly you want to live. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's very much uh, nicely summarized, uh, Vivesh. 
so let me rephrase for my viewers so per semester uh, your fees was somewhere around 14500 let's say 15000 but out of that you had to pay only 2000 uh, dollars rest yes. of the money was covered through either scholarship or through bank loans that you got yes. and apart from that uh, every month you had to Uh, do your groceries and uh, food expenses which came around 600 dollars uh, but the best part is your accommodation seems to be very super cheap uh, like only yes. 250 dollars per uh, month because compared to yeah. this like i live in a small apartment and i pay like uh, uh, 2100 dollars uh, in singapore for a two bedroom apartment which is very very cheap for uh, the conditions that we have now so yeah. how did you manage to get an accommodation at such a low price Uh, so uh, these were the uh, NTU dorms uh, that I think all international students would get. At least in the first year, it was compulsory that you would get. But I think uh, so. This was back uh, like three years ago, uh, three to four years ago. So I can't be sure what exactly the situation now is. But as far as I know, everyone gets an accommodation now. But again, uh, don't take my word on this. I'm not really sure. uh yeah but uh, again the 250 dollars per month that was back in 2013 2014 so uh, yeah the prices definitely would have increased now but again not so much that you actually uh, that uh, it would be a burden for you ah oh, that's uh, still uh, very much manageable so yes. devesh you completed your education uh, four years education and now uh, you got a job but yes. you were left with a big educational loan uh, if i'm not wrong it was uh, somewhere around 50000 dollars uh, and yes. that loan that loan you had to pay uh, uh, in the forthcoming years so how did you uh, manage to pay it back and uh, yearly like how much time did it take for you to pay back the loans okay so uh, again for the loans so the uh, the best part of uh, paying back the loans was for the first four years when i was actually studying there was no interest Uh, on those loans so even after my uh, graduation the total amount was uh, $45000 uh, around $45000 if i remember correctly yeah and uh, so yeah after my uh, graduation i immediately started paying back the loans uh, i uh, i remember i think i remember correct if i remember correctly i started paying around uh, thousand dollars per month but again that again depends on if i have any other expenses so if i didn't have any other expenses i would actually pay more during that uh, during that month or during that year so uh, it again depends on how much you want to pay and how uh, how uh, how early you want to finish off the loan so uh, it really depends on you and because the interest flow uh, interest rate is also quite less it was uh, something around 4. x x percentage i don't remember uh, i don't remember now yeah so i uh, recently finished my loans i think last year may uh, i finished paying my loans and uh, yeah that's it i'm uh, debt free now yeah that's great so roughly you took around 36 months to pay your 45000 yes. loan and that loan came uh, at a very attractive interest rate of just 4.x uh, percentage per annum because compared yes. to compared to what i paid when i took an education loan back in 2010 uh, when i joined uh, joined my university it was somewhere around 10% uh, that's yes. what i paid so we can see like uh, there are two advantages of taking loan within singapore one is you pay no interest till the time your education is not complete and second thing uh the 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 final interest rate that you are paying is almost half of what you pay in india so amazing information i think for our viewers so now uh, any message that you have for our aspirants who are planning to move abroad for their education because you have an experience of uh, exploring opportunities in us maybe uk and uh, singapore also so what do you have to say for people who are planning to study abroad okay so uh, for people who are planning to study abroad it might seem uh, it might seem a little daunting uh, because of the amount because uh, like the uh, 
the amount is too much, the tuition fees is too much, and the living expenses can be too much. But uh, the Singapore government is very helpful for international students, where uh, they help you not only with these loans that they make very easy to get, but also there are other opportunities that you can actually take. Like there are many internships that you can um, actually do under professors or any other companies. So uh, apart from those, uh, apart from the two loans that I mentioned, uh, there are many bursaries that people can uh, that people can that students can apply for and. Uh, bursaries are actually grants given by uh, many companies uh, that uh, people with relevant criteria can apply for. So all in all, uh, Singapore is a very good choice if you want to study abroad because you get very good uh, exposure. Uh, uh, there's a lot of research that goes on here in the universities that you can take part in. And uh, after uh, your graduation, there are tons of opportunities for people who would actually uh, go a step ahead and grasp them. Uh, grasp them. Uh, that's great, uh, Devesh. I think this video is very much valuable for each and every person who is planning to study abroad, especially in Singapore. Thanks a lot for your valuable time that you uh, spent with us on the World Involvement Day. So, uh, hey guys, uh, if you like the video, please show your love by clicking the like button. Also comment on this video so that YouTube algorithm knows that this video should be shown to many other viewers. And uh, as always, we will come back next week with more exciting content and until that time, peace.